Hi, my name is Gerdy Verwoerd and you're listening to Daring Self Leadership and the Nature Connection. Today's guest is Diana Todolby. She is a leadership and teamwork development specialist and since 2000 she's been working in a corporate environment, first as a manager in the organization and HR field and then as a freelance professional. Throughout her professional life, she has been developing projects for organizational evolution, managerial growth, leadership and team development. As a professional certified coach and expert facilitator of personal and professional growth, she integrates her experience in HR with her passion for music, nature and creativity. Among her many accolades are a master degree in philosophy as well as a postgraduate degree in dance movement therapy and ecotherapy. She also studied at the University of Florence to learn how to design social and organizational innovation inspired by the world of plants. Passionate about reconnecting people and organizations with the intelligence of nature and her infinite resources for organic growth, Diana founded the Nature Coaching Academy. There she teaches coaches how to do sessions in connection with nature. When you know of my own mission of reconnecting people with themselves and nature, it will come as no surprise that I was immediately fascinated by Diana and her academy when I first learned of her. Within the Nature Coaching Academy, Diana has created a nature coaching and forest coaching program. It is an original integration of eco-psychology, biomimicry, biophilic design, circular thinking, wild thinking, nature connection, myutic dialogue and somatic coaching. Diana's ultimate purpose is restoring our connections, connections within ourselves, to others and our beloved planet, to co-create a future of life for all living beings, human and not human. So let's dive into my conversation with Diana Todoldi. Diana, welcome to the podcast. Uh, thank you, Herdi. It's a nice uh, pleasure for me to be here. <laughs> oh, great. I, I learned about you through LinkedIn and I don't quite remember how probably because we have mutual connections and your nature coaching academy pops up yeah so um i certainly want to talk about that because you know that is sounds incredibly interesting and i've looked at your program and i'm like someday i'm in the not too far or future hopefully i'll be uh, one of your clients <laughs> but until then um you'll have to wait for me i'm curious what is the first time that you can remember that you felt a deep connection to nature hmm. first time this question is a surprise um it was meant to be yeah um okay uh, basically i'd grown up um, in the country uh, mm -hmm. near the alps mm -hmm. and uh, um, my parents have this big property with a big garden and uh, uh, it was, uh, it, it still is because they still live there mm -hmm. uh, outside of the town where I was uh, born. So basically my, uh, my story as a child was a very lonely uh, story, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, um, lonely just because uh, I was not so close to my friends and to the school, but it was filled with the presence of nature. Mm -hmm. So uh, my first uh, um, memories of me with nature are in the garden of my parents playing with the different trees that uh, still are there, uh, climbing on the trees, having my hidden secrets, uh, uh, secret bases mm -hmm. uh, underneath the trees uh, with uh, big boxes full of strange dresses. And I was like, you know, uh, pretending all my, my stories as an adventurer or as, a, I don't know, the, the princess of the tree and all mm -hmm. these things that I was making up. So, and I remember uh, that uh, every tree had a different... Uh, um, um, I, I was doing different things with different trees. Mm -hmm. So there was the tree where I was uh, like, you know, the explorer and climbing to the to the very top and looking on the country around. And then there was the tree. I don't know, unfortunately, the names in English. So mm -hmm. since, I'm right. Italian, since I'm Italian, it's it's a bit tricky for me to have those names, exact names of those trees in English. Mm -hmm. But then there was the Bianco Spino, which is like a bush-like tree, yeah. which was the, the tree where I was doing my homeworks. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, and 
was near the kitchen. And so these are really my first memories. Uh, me with nature, with um, uh, feeling the different aspects of each tree and mm -hmm. uh, uh, making friendship with each of them. Wow. And I can imagine it, I, it does. So there's loneliness in there, but there's companionship also because there's companionship yeah. from nature. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that sounds beautiful. So did you manage to maintain that um, connection with nature as you grew into adulthood and started to work? There has been um, like uh, uh, um, some time where this was cut off because as a teen, I was quite complicated. And I think now that you ask me, I didn't realize it before, but maybe I was so complicated as a teen because mm -hmm. I was disconnecting from nature because I really had a deep connection with nature until I was like 11. Mm -hmm. And then again, after 17. So the last two days of high, uh, two years of high school, mm -hmm. I remember that again, nature was um, coming back a lot in my life. And I was, um, and I was not feeling so good in, in those years because I was suffering for uh, eating disorders, anorexia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more I was like um, frustrating my body uh, with, without eating, yep. the more I was reconnecting with nature through my body, uh, through exercising a lot at, the, at, those, uh, at mm -hmm. that time. Yeah. And also, um, in, at, when I was 17, I started practicing on my own contemplation and meditation with nature. Mm -hmm. And that... I'm sure somehow led me to recovering from the eating disorders as well. Mm. It's, some, it's an aspect of my story that is uh, foundational to who I am today. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel also, I have to say, I feel some gratefulness for those very harsh years, very difficult years, because it's through the work that I've been doing on myself um, to come out of that. Yeah. Thing that uh, I learned so much about how I work, about my, how I work uh, internally, I mean, as a person, mm -hmm. um, about my connection with my body, about my connection with nature through my body. And so those years were the years where through so much pain, uh, uh, something in, emerged of yeah. the Anna that I am today. Mm. So, does it, but that doesn't sound like an easy journey. It's something beautiful came out of it, but it's it was the, probably not. Um, it may have been a struggle to get to the point where you were like, where you were able to see, okay, those times were not the best times of my life, but look what it has brought me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was like. Um, <laughs> Like dying and mm -hmm. rebirth. Yeah. It was just that. That's, but yeah. It was, uh, I would say, a natural process. Mm. Um, the pain part was, I think, totally unconscious because when I was anorexic, I, I felt so powerful by, you know, um, uh, renouncing to food. Mm -hmm. It made me feel so powerful. So I wasn't in pain on mm -hmm. a conscious level. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So the suffering, I think, was all, you know, in the roots of these. Mm -hmm. of these. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, uh, I had some foundational experiences, um, uh, which have to do with um, connecting with nature on this deeper level uh, that allowed me to shift something mm. in the relationship with my body and with others. And this is what let my, my, my truest identity emerge later. But and, and, and it was very natural because I just came uh, into these experiences without looking for them. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, at that time, I was in the, um, 
uh, years between the end of the high school and the beginning of university, where I was uh, for two years studying as a professional actress. Mm -hmm. uh, and in those years, I've had these couple of experiences and uh, I found myself following a mentor, which is today, still today my mentor um, in workshops, in immersions in nature. And this was like in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. So it's like 30 years ago, almost 30 years ago. And so these were my early experiences as an adult with nature as a per personal growth workshops. Mm. And um, so, I mean, the pain was underneath, but yeah. on the surface, it was really all like a flow. And, mm. and I really felt like um, I was dancing uh, what was happening in a very natural way. Yeah. 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 Um. I do. I don't really want to stay with anorexia uh, a bit of your part of your life unless you want to. But um, for those people who are listening and who are perhaps struggling with their own body image thing, mm -hmm. and uh, and are hearing, are listening to you talk about you finding a connection with nature or experiencing a connection with nature. Um, I guess my question is: Can you? say something to those people about that or is is mm. it's almost like what do you recommend because it pe people might be might be like oh my god this is something that i would really like to do but how do i experience that where do i go what can i do that's mm. that's a lot of questions but i hope you understand what i'm asking yeah, uh, I kind of understand. Um, it was a long process, mm -hmm. so it's hard to compress it in a few sentences. That's, and yeah. this process started with um, with a measured experience where um, I like felt my body alive again. Mm. You know, anorexia is all about uh, basically disconnecting from your body and you know not feeling yeah. it's really not for me at least i I'm, i don't know if it's like this mm -hmm. for everybody um so um, i had one experience with this mentor of mine um where i suddenly felt my body i i, I don't know how to describe mm -hmm. it exactly. yeah um, and and from there, I just said, okay, this thing is totally new for me uh, at this point in my life, but I feel a strong potential. How can I uh, cultivate this connection? How can I feel my body so strongly again? Mm -hmm. uh, and this led me to um, a path where it's all been self-made. So I, until later years, I mm -hmm. didn't get any psychotherapy. It was mm -hmm. all self-managed, mm -hmm. which is you know, quite uh, unusual, yeah. as, as I know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I managed to uh, come out of these disorders completely on my own, reading wow. a lot, working a lot on myself. And it took me like two years not to count anymore the calories in my in my plate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but these, these two years, path has been made of um, a lot of uh, self-managed uh, work with bioenergetics which is a, a psychotherapeutic approach by mm -hmm. Alexander Lowen uh, and it was all self-managed mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and then uh, just uh, um, staying with my body awakening the sensations in the legs in the arms in the heart and just feeling uh, mm. i can't describe it uh, it's hard to describe it but i can't use different words no no and i yeah, i don't have the uh, your experience but i think um i know what you mean in the sense of becoming aware of your body because i've had this experience like that myself where i knew with every fiber of my body that i was doing something that my body really wanted to do yeah yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Just following the call of your body to walk, uh, to stop, to savor throughout the senses. Yes. So uh, it's really a uh, reawakening to the intelligence of the body. Yeah. And that, that was the process for me. And, and this is now what I teach, basically. Mm, exactly. Just, 
trusting the process of your body, trusting the organic knowledge that we all have Mm -hmm. and that we get disconnected from very easily throughout the education system, the culture, the society, and the the systems of disconnection that are Mm -hmm. everywhere around us. So it's really easy to disconnect. And the more I work in the corporate environment and the more I work with young people in the Mm -hmm. corporate environment, the more I notice that this disconnection is causing people to lose completely a compass in their life. Yeah. For me, this is foundational. Getting back to my inner compass through my organic intelligence, my somatic intelligence, and, and the body we we are nature okay? yeah. mm-hmm. but sometimes here we mm, we don't really feel it people and, can't see you but she's she's uh grabbing onto her head the hair oh, was in yeah yeah thank you i'm always forgetting that it this is an audio interview but yes yeah. um yeah it's like in the head we sometimes get you know disconnected from yeah. the fact the the felt sense that we are nature so we know that we are nature but one thing is knowing it and another thing is feeling, feeling it. it yeah and also i think especially in the western world there's a lot of people who are so in their heads that they have completely forgotten that little tidbit of we are nature yeah. We, we are as much a part of nature as the ant that we uh, try to destroy in our garden because we think that ant is ruining it yeah. um, or or the tree or you know whatever else a natural yeah. thing is happening around us the plant in our um, yeah. in our in our house or the cat or the dog it's all nat- nature and we are as much a species or um yeah, a species on this planet as anything else. Yeah, yes, we are part of a web of life. And yeah. sometimes feeling aside or on top Out. of it or mm-hmm. better yeah. is the real cause of this disconnective way uh, to, to work, to live. And uh, this creates yeah. a lot of pain inside of ourselves, inside yeah. our bodies. But we come also accustomed not to notice it. Yeah, we think that we're supposed to feel this way. And it's not until we experience that moment that you mentioned, for example, where you felt alive in your body and you felt your body being alive or my own experience with that. It's not until you have that experience that you realize, oh, my God, there's so much more. I love this, Herdy. You said something so precious, truly, because sometimes people don't know what to look for, so they don't look for it. No, no, it's it, it's like um, I'm not a big fan of um, cake, especially not when I was a kid, you know, and my my dad especially would say, Gerdy, you don't know what you're missing. And my answer always was, Dad, if I don't know what I'm missing, I can't miss it, can I? Yeah, right. So right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's that's true for so many people. And you were mentioning the younger generation. And I am very uh, I have nieces and nephews and they have they have been very fortunate because they have parents that treasure the time outside. So they take the kids outside. But there's lots of children that never get that experience. I remember bringing uh, having to guide a group of kids from Vienna, which is a big city in Austria um into the mountains and we came across a couple of young cows but some of the cows here still have their horns because the farmers those farmers uh don't care about cutting down the horns they 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 feel like the cows should have their horns Mm -hmm. and these children were like well steers obviously those must be bulls because they have horns no idea that a cow could have horns also no idea that it's from the cow that is seen in the meadow that uh, that's where the milk comes from and it doesn't just come from a or sort of magically appear in a carton in the supermarket no right. idea and i always thought that can't be true it can't be true that children don't or people don't know that milk comes from a cow but i had a whole group of kids that didn't know this incredible I know. I was as shocked as you were. I was like, I was 
totally flabbergasted. I was, this can't be true. But I had 10, 12 kids in front of me who said, really? This is where we're going? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a whole generation of children and, and probably generations that are coming after that. And maybe some generations before, because you were talking about people in corporate life, young people in corporate life that have no idea that they are part of nature and have never experienced that connection. Yeah. And, and this impacts the way people think and behave and yes. the way they perceive their problems sometimes because um, it's like you lack that foundational inner compass, you know, if you are disconnected from your body. So what's left? Mm. You are left to complexity. You are left to uh, mess, <laughs> potentially. Mm. So... Um, part of my work really that makes me um it, it's part of my call i would say of my mm -hmm. calling mm -hmm. um is really design and create experiences that allow people to have this experience of deep connection with oneself mm -hmm. with themselves uh and and when you are there then you are also in a better condition to really connect with another person and to really connect with 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 any other living being in mm, fact. yeah so you are doing this um with coaches and in corporations with people who work in corporate life mm -hmm. what are the benefits for say uh people who are working in corporate teams for example in corporate uh, when you bring this whole you know, I can imagine people in corporate say, oh, my God, this lady is going to come in and she's going to teach us about a connection with nature. What does this have to do with, I don't know, the project that I'm working on or the work that we do as a team? So what are the benefits that they reap from it? Well, every project is unique and every team is unique. So uh, usually I, I design uh, the experiences uh, for specific goals. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, um, basically, um, maybe two main categories of my work that I have been developing are uh, team experiences where we um, uh, work in synergy with nature mm -hmm. to find inspiration, strategies, and solutions to apply to the team's challenges. Mm -hmm. So this uh, is uh, an aspect of the work that involves biomimicry, mm -hmm. where uh, I take people outdoors with nature. Usually I work with a biologist in this case. Yeah. Um, that uh, supports me to um, uh, develop um, practices and observations mm -hmm. and uh, uh, explorations of the chosen ecosystem where we are working mm -hmm. that more offers insights and learning for the challenges that the team is working on. So mm -hmm. this is one aspect uh, of work. Okay. And in these cases, uh, I may propose also like... Um, uh, learning games, team learning games, mm -hmm. where I engage participants in uh, uh, learning games that are designed for them mm -hmm. to um, basically experience different um, uh, team dynamics and uh, th that reflect the challenges that they have. Yeah. So it's like a kind of um, work that I do where nature is both the source of inspiration and the model of uh, solution and strategies. Mm. And also the place where we activate the bodies and the energy of the team with games. Yeah. Um, and, then, and, and these games often are modeled on natural uh, um, um, processes or natural models. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there are activities that allow people to... Um, experience the logic that moves uh, migrating birds, for yeah. example, uh, uh, or um, other kind of experiences that have to do, uh, that, that mimic uh, how the roots uh, of a tree work underneath mm -hmm. the soil, beneath the soil, yeah. and so on. So mm -hmm. there is uh, uh, biomimicry also in the different activities that I may design. And then there is um, uh, another big uh, category of work that is uh, that has to do with stress management, stress relief, 
uh, well-being, uh, uh, team well-being. Mm -hmm. And this is the more uh, meditative and deeper connection with nature. It's completely a different work. When mm -hmm. I work with forest bathing, with mindfulness with nature, with slowness, timelessness, uh, wandering in the woods and other kind of activities that yeah. are um, more related to what we were talking before. So creating this space for deeper connection. Mm -hmm. um, this is when I also invite people to uh, connect with natural coaches, for example. So uh, depending on the, um, the goal, again, once more yeah. that the, the, the client gives me uh, mm -hmm. to pursue, uh, I can design um, uh, experiences of deep connection with specific mentors for specific themes or subjects. So, for example, um, experiences of connection with the sun mm -hmm. for me resembles all that is um, uh, energy and that also uh, attracts the direction of growth mm -hmm. of the human being. Yeah. So uh, as a metaphor, the sun can be your guiding values. Uh, what lights you up? Yeah. What is today orienting your growth? Uh, in the name of what? Are, mm -hmm. you, uh, are you doing what you do every day? Mm -hmm. Your why? Okay, yeah. so mm -hmm. this is the metaphoric part of the sun mm -hmm. that uh, uh, I ask participants to work on. So with these kind of questions mm -hmm. after they had an immersion in, in the real sun okay? yeah. and really absorbing the sun on their skin and so on. Or we may connect with the specific animals or uh, trees or so. Um, this is all part of uh, the, the design process uh, that is always very personalized on the needs mm. of the group. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like you give people amazing experiences. <laughs> well, they, they, uh, I'm passionate about this, so. Yeah, yeah you can tell, I can tell. Um, <laughs> you also mentioned natural coaches and you started Nature Coaching Academy. And that you've, you have a you've had a corporate career, you now you you started integrating more and more of nature especially especially when you uh, went out on your own and then you started the nature coaching academy what is it that you saw lacking in the world that you um created the nature coaching academy for mm -hmm. uh, uh where can i start <laughs> it was a long journey uh, so uh, basically the nature Coach coaching academy was established uh, um, in uh, 2019 or 2017 i don't mm -hmm. remember exactly mm -hmm. uh, the idea was born earlier but then since i was a always uh, uh, so much busy with my corporate work i was you know delaying year after year the start of this uh, um, exposure of, of my activities with nature on a on a uh, uh, on a wider uh, scale scale exactly mm -hmm. Um, so I started, so as I said, uh, when uh, in my late uh, teen years, I got back to reconnecting with nature and that then began uh, and then, then um, continued um, uh, and never stopped anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, most of my explorations uh, with nature were solo explorations uh for many many years until in 2009 i and, and i was working as you said uh in uh, in the corporate environment since mm -hmm. the year 2000 so mm -hmm. after my master degree in philosophy i got um uh, hired and yeah. employed by a company um in italy mm -hmm. which has different plants in different countries in europe and i was initially in the communication field uh, and then I, uh, I moved to um, organizational development, uh, management systems, and HR learning and development uh, management. And that was my role until uh, I finally quit mm. my corporate work in 2019. Mm -hmm. So it was a very long journey out, yeah. uh, which, uh, which, has, which has taken me a lot of planning. Uh, but I, as I got hired, I immediately knew that my call was another, 
was different. Yeah. So I was there to learn a lot and I enjoyed all of the 19 years that I spent there. I have mm-hmm. to say, I, mm-hmm. I loved the people. I, I learned so much. I feel, I still feel so much gratefulness for the, uh, the owner of this yeah. company, which has really given me incredible opportunities uh, to grow and to learn. So mm-hmm. gratefulness and yes. uh, is still with me. But um, uh, my soul is the soul of a freelancer. I know it. I knew it from the start. And so I, um, I started uh, building my way out, uh, not knowing exactly what I would be doing, mm-hmm. uh, okay? but, but knowing that I wanted a way out that had to do more with who I am uh, deeply. Mm-hmm. And in my deepness, I find nature and I find the body. Uh, but I found this that I'm telling you over the years. It was mm-hmm. not so clear at the beginning. I just felt, okay, a part of my soul is missing here. I need to cultivate it aside. So for many years, so from year 2000 to uh, for nine years, yeah. Uh, I was just cultivating my connection with nature for the pleasure of doing it and as a way to rebalance my energy after Mm -hmm. long days of work. So uh, every day, um, almost every day, like at least no less than uh, five days a week, as far as I remember, Mm -hmm. I was um, doing my sport activities as I was running in the country uh, in any season. And then doing 30 or 40 or 50 minutes of meditation with nature through Mm -hmm. a practice of movement that is now part of what I teach, which is a a kind of yoga with trees, but Mm -hmm. it's more free form. Yeah. Contemplation practice through, it's an embodied contemplation practice in synergy with the tree. Mm -hmm. So I was doing this practice for as I said, three or four times a, uh, a week for 40 minutes in any season, any weather condition, snow, rain, cold, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and this has allowed me for so many years since, since then to really integrate the cycles of nature, the seasons, and to create a space within me made of silence and presence and respect for myself and from a, for another being, which, which is the tree that I was connecting so much with, mm. which is an apple tree, by the way, yes. <laughs> and it's still in my heart, and it's in the house of my parents that I was talking about before. Mm-hmm. And uh, so... This was my rebalancing practice for all those years until in 2009, I said, okay, let's see if this is communicatable, understandable by something else uh, uh, rather Mm -hmm. than me. Mm -hmm. So in 2009, there was my first workshop uh, where I was inviting people to experience what I was experiencing doing with my my trip. Mm. And it worked, and, and it was around the 20 people, uh, or 15 or 20, I don't remember exactly, in my garden, mm-hmm. uh, with my indications connecting with the trees in my garden. And it was really eye-opening, yeah. and I felt, okay, this is one thing that works, uh, that makes so much good to people, mm-hmm. uh, let's do it again. And so I, I, uh, I, I then um, established the connections with local associations taking care of the environment, proposing them to synergize when mm-hmm. they had their walk, uh, walk arounds. And uh, so, and, yep. and, and, and this was the onset of the Nature Coaching Academy until uh, I finally released my first official course in 2019 with mm-hmm. the first cohort of 25 participants. And uh, and the sign for me that that was that that is my thing yeah. is that uh, I didn't feel like I was working. I felt like a gift, uh, you know, to be yeah. able to have people experiencing with me what 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 has been working for me for so many years, mm-hmm. and to see the awareness of a different possibility to feel and to stay and to be and to feel nature emerging there was so that was so fulfilling that Mm -hmm. uh, it became uh, um, uh, obvious that uh, 
I really had to invest more and more of my time in that. And, uh, and that was for me the, um, the sign that I could exit the corporate world. Uh, yeah. So that's some story. Thank you. Thank you. So you teach coaches about the connection with nature, but not only that, you teach them how they can help their clients. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah exactly. How to integrate uh, deep nature connection experiences and what I call ecosomatic practices, which are con practices of connecting with nature through the body and uh, um, through accessing a different state of perception and mm -hmm. awareness. So mm -hmm. this is what I call ecosomatic practices. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so how to integrate that into the coaching session. Mm. And is it is it just for coaches who want to work with corporate people or is it, it can any coach? Uh, Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, it's something that has to do with the person and not mm. with the role that they yeah. cover mm -hmm. inside a company. So it, it's yeah. for me, I, I'm always speaking about personal growth, uh, as a foundation to professional growth mm, agreed. Mm. Yeah. so yeah. it's also something that even if it's if uh, the corporation sends one of their own employees or a team of employees um to you or to one of the coaches that you trained it is not it is always going to be an experience on a personal level that it, that is being integrated into their professional lives. Yeah. So it's an exciting thing. Well, the, and it's basically, in my opinion, that is true for any coaching that is being done because it's always the person that you coach and never the role. Absolutely. At the same time, because people may be coming to you um, so very disconnected from nature and then to have experiences where they are deeply connected with nature, that can be, in other words that come into my mind, a mind blowing experience. So they can come back very differently or with, with experience that have been life changing as they were for you and as they were for me. They can come back to work with having, a, having had a life changing experience and who knows where that is going to lead them. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's the the yeah the, the, tri the tricky aspect of it yeah. because sometimes um you know re what happens is that people reawaken a longing for more balance yeah. that they forgot you know in the everyday um corporate mixer sometimes mm -hmm. i call yeah. it okay yeah 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 uh, in Italian, there is a more fancy word, but I, I don't know how, how to translate it in English. Okay, well, now I want to hear it in Italian. What is the Italian word? A trita carne, trita carne <laughs> which is like, you know, um, it's chopping, sounds... chopping meat. Uh, I was going to say, it sounds like chopped meat. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the chopper, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so um, that's tricky because then what do you do with that longing? Yeah. And when you have reawakened that longing and you look at your everyday, uh, sometimes disconnected work, mm. what do you do with that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that becomes the major question. And it's a very important question. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, twice in my career with two like big multinational companies, we've had, they request us. They requested us experiences of deep nature mm -hmm. connection. You know, we have this well-being program. So yes, yeah. what you do is beautiful. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. We did it. Mm -hmm. And then I remember in, in two occasions, one was like um, maybe five or six years ago, a big company, everybody knows. Um, and the, this was the, the chief finance officer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had this beautiful experience. It, it was a very big experience for the whole day with 80 people, eight different groups working in parallel with different uh, mentors and coaches. At the end, she, she, she came to me and said, oh, Diana, it's been such an amazing day, so beautiful. Oh, I've seen the people. But, you know, I also wonder, and now that we go back to work and I have to ask them to stay longer, 
longer hours and to work more in some moments. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Diana? Uh, uh, mm, I don't know. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. you asked us for well being experiences. Here it is now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a fact that yeah. needs to, to care, you know, to be mm -hmm. handled. Yeah. And recently, last this year, mm -hmm. in July, I had this other experience, well-being day. Okay, So the mission was well-being. That's what I did. And uh, then we were asking this. Um, um, it was a group of 20 talents in mm -hmm. this uh, multinational mm -hmm. uh, between 26 and 30 years old. And... Um, and the same question at the end, uh, same question. The HR training manager said, okay, yeah, we've seen the work. It's really profound. It's nice. But then, you know, it's really delicate because then uh, uh, all these, you know, reflections upon work-life balance, and then we push them to do more and more and more. So how do you see that? How do I see yeah, that? Yeah, it's, it's like asking the question, yeah, is is like you know the answer exactly because you're asking the question because you know what you're asking of these people is not what you should be you know asking. Yeah, you know it's not good. Yeah, because no. when you look at nature, everything is about balance. Yeah, and and well, I, when I look back at my own experience after I. Um, was so far out of balance that my body and my mind said i'm sorry but i can't handle this anymore you have to give me a break and then i had an, an 18 month long break mm -hmm. and i came back and I, I i still um sometimes very rarely now because it's been so long but say, certainly at the beginning people would say gerd you haven't gone back to being your old self have you and I was like, no, and that person is not come, going, to, going to come back because I don't want to get into the same situation. But like the companies that you just mentioned, I was working for a company that pushed us to do more and more. Yeah. And ultimately, everybody knows that ultimately that is a very unhealthy thing to ask of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we, we do the same thing that we do to ourselves, to our planet. Yeah. You know? So yes. more and more and more. And now we are at the point where we need 1.5 planets to keep on working like this. Like yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And so it, it's just built wrong. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's um, that what I find hopeful is that it's not a big movement yet, but you see pockets of people who are like, we can't do it like this. We have to start listening to nature again. We have to talk with indigenous people, for example, because yeah. they knew how to be with nature. And I'm reading uh, Braiding Sweetgrass at the moment. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's a book by a, I always, uh, I'll give you, I'll, I'll put the, uh, the author in the, in the show notes. Oh. But Braiding Sweetgrass was, is written by a scientist who is an indigenous I want to say Canadian or wow. a in indigenous American, uh -huh. but she combines her indigenous knowledge and the indigenous knowledge of her elders with her science. Wow. So she, brings, she, she marries those two. And it's a lot is about how, how do we live in, uh, in balance with nature? How do we take only what we need mm -hmm. and leave enough so that it can regenerate and it can, and, and it keeps on giving, but, and we keep on, thanking and you know there's this balance there's a give and take instead of just taking what we especially in the in quotes first world have been doing yeah interesting it's very interesting and it's a good read too because i'm not a big reader of scientific books but this is a book that is fun to read and i and she tells stories and that i i learn through stories you can throw data at me until uh, the cows come home but i will i will not not remember it but give me a story and I can I can still give you the stories of books that I've read as a teenager or younger so I remember those sounds like a good read <laughs> it's a good read it's a good read um so also, what is 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'd like to add uh, one thing. Uh, um, uh, recently, Arianna Huffington, yes. the founder mm-hmm. of the Huffington Post, pub- published uh, an article. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you can find it also by Googling uh, yeah. mm-hmm. burnt out, Arianna Huffington, burnt, burnt out people, burning the planet, something mm-hmm. like that. Maybe okay. And the, cons- the key concept in that article, which was a collection of uh, scientific uh, mm-hmm. articles too, uh, was that the more you are stressed, the more your decision will be decisions that will put um, a heavier stress on the planet. Yeah. So the idea is that really burnt out people are burning the planet because mm. the more you are stressed, tired and stressed, the less energy you have to create solutions that take care for the planet because you work on emergency mode. Yeah. It's like your interest, is, uh, your interest gets narrow and yeah. you are focused on your on yourself because mm. you know you feel yeah. tired. So <laughs> the, 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 it's enough to focus on that. You can't focus on anything else. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so mm. you lose this holistic view of problems and there are many researches demonstrating that the decision making is badly impacted by stress yeah so you know (laughs) yeah no it's completely agree and that's um that's basically also what the indigenous people can teach us as long as we're willing to learn from them because as soon as you find balance stress dissipates mm-hmm. stress disappears yeah. and that's true for nature that's true for us we are part of nature after all and it's true for the work that we do as soon as we find our, we're as able to re-establish some kind of balance it's it, like you said we can um open our perspective again we're able to see beyond the the problem that is immediately in front of us yeah Absolutely. Yeah. And also one of the of life guiding principles as uh, Janine Benius, which is the uh, like the, the, the person that the scientist that has favored uh, the, the word of biomimicry uh, mm-hmm. in, in the world. Mm-hmm. And she says one of um, uh, life guiding principles is that life acknowledges and respects limits. Yeah. Like, so what happens when you don't when we don't do it in our yeah. life? Yeah. Recently, I um, uh, participated into a convention for a mm-hmm. client where I was um, uh, guiding an, an activity, yeah. by the way, with nature uh, on well-being once mm-hmm. more. And I yeah. didn't know. Uh, I I don't know why, but they didn't tell me that the title of the convention um, was going beyond every limit. <laughs> <laughs> so when I when I uh, was there and mm-hmm. I acknowledged uh, that and I was with a colleague, I yeah. said, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And and one of the guiding principles that I had to share that I was planning to share was exactly acknowledge and respect limit. Of course, that has been wiped out from the program immediately. <laughs> 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 because it would be, you know, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting, and it's it's that whole idea of we uh, we it needs to be more, 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 mm. which is yeah, which by now um, I think more and more people are seeing that that has been disproven. You can't do more, 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 and, and you have to give back to to be able to sustain yeah not just ourselves and and what we need but also the rest of the planet and that's the whole you know that's part of why why i do what i do why i do these things because i believe that as the more people we can reconnect with nature the more they will start caring about it and the more they will start understanding that the planet will be fine without us probably they'll do better without us (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i agree <laughs> so if we want to save the planet we better start saving ourselves yeah and we ha- we can only save ourselves when we save the planet so i think mm-hmm. it needs to be turned around instead of people worrying about saving the planet they have to to start worrying about saving human human race humanity 
and I think I've said this on previous uh, episodes as well, it's, it's like we need to be, as a humanity, as a species, should be put on the um, in danger of an extinction list. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Brilliant. But, yeah, but you know. Anyways, um, conscious of our time together, I asked you um, three the three questions, or I gave you the three questions um, in beforehand, so you had time to think about them. I ask all, all my guests whether or not they have a favorite book that um, celebrates nature. Yeah. And if and I always give people bonus points when they can tell me it's a novel. Ah, yes. So I have two novels. So extra, uh, extra points. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, they are in Italian and they're not translated in English, unfortunately, but they're two very good mm -hmm. books. One is The Wolf and the Equilibrist. Mm -hmm. uh, Say it in Italian because I, lo I love just the sound of it. Ah, uh, yes. Il Lupo e l'Equilibrista. Mm -hmm. uh, by Max Solina, who is uh, Solinas, who is mm -hmm. a sculptor. He's a dear friend also. Uh, he became a, a dear friend after mm -hmm. I read this book and I told him. Mm -hmm. And um, this book is about the relationship between uh, a man mm -hmm. and a wolf. Uh, that uh, um, <laughs> the, the, the magic of this book is that it, it, for me, it's when you read it, after you read it, an aspect of yourself becomes more wolf. Oh. I don't know how else to describe it. Now I have to learn Italian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really beautiful. And it's uh, a, a beautiful way to reawaken this longing for something wilder within mm -hmm. us. So this is one. And the other one is, again, in Italian, um, L'abbraccio selvatico delle Alpi, which is like the wild hug of the Alps. Mm -hmm. And this is um, a beautiful story. It's a true story of the author, which is Franco Micheli. He's mm -hmm. an alpinist. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the story uh, of, the, um, um, of him um, do, uh, marching uh, from uh, uh, the one side of the Alps. You know, the Alps are like a big arc yeah. that cover the, the northern part of Italy from mm -hmm. side to side. Mm -hmm. So he did this travel mm -hmm. on foot mm -hmm. uh, alone with some friends that were, were with him uh, along the journey. Yeah. He was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and without a tent, uh, without any kind of, um, you know, like uh, little fire, campfire or yeah. nothing. So very uh, basic. Mm -hmm. Very basic, like just a backpack and uh, a sleep bag, a mm -hmm. sleeping bag. And he did this for two months during the summer. And it's the story of his um, encounter with the deep spirit of the Alps. So oh. it's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to learn Italian. <laughs> or translated the book in English. <laughs> uh, well, for that, I would have to learn Italian as well. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, although I do have American friend, an American friend who is fluent in Italian, so maybe I can uh, employ her to do it. Um, a favorite piece of music that celebrates nature? Mm -hmm. The Cherokee Morning Song. Uh, mm -hmm. which is a very famous piece and by Robbie Robertson uh, who did the version that I like the most yeah it's with the Red Road Ensemble and mm -hmm. other singers it's really a beautiful piece and okay. I may even sing it for you if you want at the end yeah <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> now you will have to but before I ask I'm ask you to sing it to sing it um a favorite movie or play that celebrates nature um among the many, okay, I, there is Microcosmos, which is beautiful, and mm -hmm. it's about the insects that live in the grass. And yeah. the, the, maybe it's the same, I don't remember if it's the same um, uh, director, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the, the most beautiful for me is the uh, migrating birds, Le Peuple Migrateur in mm -hmm. French, Popolo Migratore in Italiano, so mm -hmm. it's a movie by Jacques Perrin. Mm -hmm. which is the director and uh, it's about the migration of birds it's a 
it's an amazing, immense movie that anybody must see to really feel this deep connection with the birds, which is which are magical beings. So I strongly, strongly suggest it. Thank you. I'm going to look it up. So now I have to go learn Italian, find a Cherokee morning song, and ah. watch a movie. Good. <laughs> I have I have my work cut out for me. Thank you. Um, final question before uh, before I ask you to sing, and then <laughs> <laughs> is there what is one thing that you would recommend people do if they want to start on their journey of reconnecting with nature? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, for me, one thing is find a peaceful place in nature that you love, that makes you feel uh, calm and present where you can spend some time mm -hmm. and uh, find a way to mm, disconnect with your mind when you are there. Uh, maybe switch off the devices and just immerse yourself in any pleasant sensation that you feel and find like a hook for your attention. Um, for me, for example, there is a spot uh, in, uh, along River Adda, which is my, uh, for me, it's my aunt. I decided mm -hmm. that yep. River Adda is my aunt. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the relationship I have with her. And I mm -hmm. go to take the tea with her almost every day, mm -hmm. <laughs> like for, with every good aunt. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when I'm there, there is a spot where I like to sit, uh, which allows me to look at the uh, movement of the water and the reflection of the light on the water. And for me, that is mesmerizing. It's like it, 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 that image of the water flowing with the light has an effect on my mind that mm -hmm. stops thinking. So find something in your favorite spot with nature that really makes you feel pleasure and that captures your attention and makes you feel good as you watch it so that you can completely be captured by that and forget about your mind for a while yeah and savor it with your senses and before doing it doing all this i recommend to stretch your body fully because this is the most and you can do it everywhere mm -hmm. uh, this piece the stretching part you can do it everywhere it's a very easy way very powerful way uh, to just reawaken the pleasure in your body and when we are in pleasure when we feel pleasure we are uh, uh, more in synergy with life you know uh, life yeah. uh, is strongly connected to to feeling good uh, and so this is for me the two aspects stretch feel good in your body feel good in a spot you love with nature find something that captures your attention and that allows you to leave your thoughts behind and just be present and feel sounds like a wonderful and great tip all right yeah. you offered <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You don't have to do the whole song. Sing, sing some no, of it. It's just a couple of sentences, like all the, um, like all the. Uh, this is a song that comes from the uh, Native Americans, mm -hmm. and uh, it goes like this: When they are, when they are, when they are, when they are. Oh, 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 hey, oh, hey, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Diana, thank you for being with me. <laughs> thank you, Henry, for inviting me. And uh, I look forward to meeting you in person. <laughs> yes, so do I. You've been listening to Daring Self Leadership and the Nature Connection. You can find the show notes for this episode and every other one on the podcast page on the Dare Greatly Coaching website. The podcast is available wherever you like to listen and it's hosted by me, Gerdy Verwoerd. The music is Butt Bursting by Poddington Bear. Thank you for being with me today. I hope you'll join me again for the next episode. And in the meantime, as always, go Dare Greatly.